Hey bitches, welcome back to my channel. I'm sitting here once again with Love My Life. You swear. Welcome back. People were missing you yesterday in the comment section. They were saying, Where's Dustin? I How was dare asleep. I come on camera without I you? I was sleeping. Yes, I he was, was tired. And of course, we are a little bit elevated right now, but we had to sit down to talk about some things I've seen going on on social media. The first thing that I want to talk about is the fact that they are trying to ban TikTok off of every single device in the United States. They have yes. already done it on all the government devices. A lot of people are freaking out about this over on TikTok because they're like, This is looking more and more like. Like a big possibility that could happen. It, it does seem like it could happen, and that's honestly scary because there's so many people that are turning to TikTok now for the news. Breaking news, guys. The bill that can ban TikTok has just been passed. I don't know why nobody's talking about this, but this is very serious. I mean, 100 million people in the U.S. actually use TikTok. TikTok is already being banned on government officials' devices. The Republicans are scared that TikTok is a Chinese spyware. The only good news is that this bill still has to go to the House and Senate to be passed and then Biden. And a lot of Democrats are against this. The bill is going to be taken to the House later this month to be voted on. And thankfully, a lot of organizations realize that this is a violation of freedom of speech. The funny thing is that TikTok is ran by Americans. The company that owns TikTok just happens to be Chinese. Now, last month, Biden said that he wasn't sure if Washington would ban TikTok. So we don't know what's going to happen. In a few weeks, TikTok CEO is going to appear before the U.S. Energy and Commerce Committee. Hopefully, they can figure something out with this. Now, as far as what you can do right now, very simple. Tell Congress. Tell your officials. If you go to ACLU's Twitter, you'll find a link where you can literally just type in your name and you can send that to Congress. It does it automatically. It's very simple. I just did it in like five seconds. Please, let's do something. I don't want TikTok to go away. I know you guys don't either. It's a great app. Yeah, not perfect, but it's fun. It's kind of giving that that might be the reason why they would want to ban TikTok. Well, I have noticed a lot of influencers over on TikTok talking about this, and some of them are being smart. Some of them are still like on the fence, like this is something that could never happen in a million years. It could. Stranger things have happen trust and believe but some of them are being very smart and they're telling everyone like i don't know if this is going to happen but please go and follow my other social media because you could look at somebody who has like three and a half million followers on tiktok go over to their instagram or even to their like youtube channel 2500 2500 people <laughs> following them so it's smart that they're getting ahead of this now i have heard some whisperings that if tiktok is going to be banned it's not just going to be like an overnight thing like you're going to wake up one day and it's just going to be gone they're going to give like a few months but what's going to happen to all these influencers what's going to happen to the influencers we need to think of all the other people that that are on there. There are so many scammers yeah. that are grifting Cole Kerrigan. Where is, <laughs> what is Cole Kerrigan going to do? Oh, he'll be on Where Instagram. Where is he going to pull the He's grift? He's going to go to Instagram Live. Cole Kerrigan is begging for money again, and you will not believe what he's up to this time. Thank you for the $10. That was so sweet. Thank you so, so much. I love you. I know it'll be more than that, but I hope it helps. It literally a dollar helps. Say thank you. That helps so much. I hate how expensive food is nowadays. To especially like to deliver it. Like I miss my car. Like they literally rack on an extra like ten dollars, twelve dollars for like taxes and delivery fees. Not including tip. It's wild. Well, I'd say there might be something baked in your house, Cole, but here's the scoop on what happened. The other day he went on live and begged for grocery monies for $100 for groceries. But instead of buying groceries, he spent the money on hair, human hair, a wig, and to go take an Uber to a beauty salon to pay a stylist who's then never showed up at his house. So now he's at his house, hungry, complaining how expensive food delivery is. Honey, you're poor. You don't get Uber, get a bus to the grocery store, take $20, $30, buy yourself some groceries that you can cook with. You cannot afford delivery. If you are begging for money off of people on the internet, you can't afford Uber Eats. And what he really needs to do is take that $100 and instead of buying human hair, a wig, go buy a bicycle and you can work for Uber Eats and earn the money to pay for your own food.
When he said that he had a filler appointment when he mm. just got done begging for grocery money, like, that was it for me. But getting back to TikTok possibly getting banned, I wonder how many influencers would be able to successfully transfer over to a place like YouTube? Because TikTok is, like, nothing but short-form content. Yeah. So are they going to be able to sit down and actually have a conversation with the camera? Because a lot of the time, they want to apply those filters. They also just want to do, like, it's... the quick little shorts. Shorts is a thing here on YouTube, yeah. though. So maybe they'll, like, try to take over that. Yeah, but they're only 60 seconds. You can yeah. go up to nine minutes on some TikTok videos. Michaela sitting down to do a PR unboxing. You know how many cuts and stuff she'd have to put into that and how many filters she'd have to apply like manually? Speaking of Michaela and her PR unboxing, people are not happy with this P. Louise PR unboxing that Michaela did because they literally sent her every single item from their so collection. Wasteful. And it was like box on top of box on top of box. It was, it was tall as tall as, as her. Is. Yeah. But a lot of people are over on TikTok calling out P. Louise. Why did she call? What did you see? Yes, I'm drying my hair. Don't judge me. Why do brands do this? Like, I think it's awesome if you've reached a level in your influencing career where you get things sent to you to try, but why the excess? Like, and this isn't just a Michaela thing. This is an influencing thing. I cannot tell you the amount of videos I have seen where these influencers don't even get to try half of these products or use them in any capacity because there's just so fucking much what is the point of sending her how many fucking boxes full of stuff why like if you have the money in your brand to just send that much shit willy-nilly to one person why don't you make it a thing where you send your loyal customers something with every package or pick pick one of your return customers and send them a small gift why is it the influencers that spend no money with you? I understand they make you money, but they give you zero of their dollars. And y'all are just like, oh my gosh, take this, 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 free, 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 you, you, you. Like, uh, it's, it almost makes me not want to buy from the brand. And this is no hate to P. Louise at all. This is a makeup thing in general. Why? Like the overabundance, especially here in the U.S., and this the disgustingly large amount of bullshit that is sent to these influencers for simply hitting the fucking algorithm lottery is absurd. Absurd. And I just, if you are a brand or you work with brands, why? Why? Why couldn't you just send her a package with a few things in it each? Because you know you're going to send her more shit next month and the month after that. Why? Like, P. Louise is apparently, like, the new and upcoming brand. I've seen some people saying that maybe they're going to take over, like, Morphe's spot. Because they're literally the name that's on everybody's lips right now. I can't open TikTok without seeing something about P. Louise. Now, I don't really know that much about mm. P. Louise, like, in the beauty community. I know that she's a thing and she has, like, her own, like, products and stuff. But a few years ago, she got, like, held up in her house and, like, people robbed her and did some, like, horrible oh shit to God. her. And she messaged me for making a video to raise awareness for it. So she was, like, super kind to me. I don't know what her character's like, but that's crazy to me that that's she sent scary. that whole damn thing to Michaela. It's like, not so that's crazy. So wasteful. It's not so crazy to me that she sent the whole thing to Michaela because during Lashgate and everything going on with that drama and Michaela, Michaela was shouting shouting out P. Louise in the comment section when she was kind of like clapping back in like a sarcastic way to people. So I'm not surprised that they sent her the whole entire collection. Now I did see the TikTok of the uh, like I, I think the P. Louise headquarters. Have mm -hmm. you seen it? Mm -hmm. Oh it's badass. Like she I put a lot of thought into blushes. that. It looks really cool. I want some of those blushes that everyone's going crazy for. One I want to see if I have the <gasps> like the influencer gasp. <gasps> that was more like the lion from the Wizard of Oz. <sighs> I can't oh, even do it now. I can't do it. But also I just want to push up the product for the first time because it is so satisfying watching people on TikTok do that. The next thing that I want to talk about is the whole Hailey Bieber, Kylie Jenner, Selena Gomez, um, Taylor yes. Swift is thrown into it. A lot of mean girl behavior is going on in my opinion yes. on the Kylie Jenner, Hailey Bieber side of things. Uh, yes. Like they have like their whole squad. It's Kylie Jenner, Hailey Bieber, you have Kendall Jenner in there. The Selena Gomez and Kylie Jenner drama explained. So Selena Gomez posted a video that she got her eyebrows laminated. And she made a video basically joking that this wasn't how her eyebrows were supposed to turn out, that this was an accident, and that her eyebrows looked too laminated when she was trying to look like Bella Hadid, who Selena Gomez called her hashtag girl crush. So after that, Kylie Jenner posted these posts on her Instagram story, one post with the caption, this was an accident, 
and another of her and Hailey Bieber's eyebrows on FaceTime. So a TikToker and some other fans thought that Kylie had made these posts basically to make fun of Selena Gomez. Another facet to the story being that Selena Gomez just passed Kylie Jenner to be the most followed person on Instagram. And of course, fans jumped on the fact that it's Hailey Bieber in the photo. And as I'm sure you know, Hailey Bieber is married to Justin Bieber, who used to date Selena, so fans speculate that there's some drama between the two. And basically, this TikToker was calling Kylie Jenner a mean girl, and she argued that the timing of Kylie and Hailey posting a photo of their eyebrows made it clear that Kylie Jenner and Hailey Bieber were trying to make fun of Selena Gomez. Kylie Jenner and Selena Gomez actually responded to these accusations in TikTok comments, which I will go over in my next video. The Selena Gomez and Kylie Jenner drama explained part two their response. So as I mentioned, this TikToker made a pretty big video accusing Kylie Jenner of making fun of Selena Gomez. And Kylie Jenner responded in the comments saying, this is reaching, no shade towards Selena ever. I didn't see her eyebrow posts. You guys are making something out of nothing. This is silly. And Selena Gomez responded, agreed at Kylie Jenner, it's all unnecessary, I'm a fan of Kylie. Well, despite both Kylie Jenner and Selena Gomez putting this to rest, some fans still think that it was absolutely Kylie Jenner's intention to be mean or to shade Selena Gomez, and claiming that Kylie Jenner has a history of making shady comments like these, and then trying to play it off like it wasn't about that person at all and getting away with it. But I don't want to get too much into the drama of like how it started about Selena Gomez's like laminated eyebrows and Kylie allegedly throwing shade but then turning around and saying that she wasn't. I want to talk about the fact that Hailey Bieber is just getting exposed left and right and people are starting to pinpoint certain things like how she copies Selena Gomez she all does. the time. And when you really watch some of these compilations of it, it's like single white female. Like it this is. is very creepy. I realized that everybody else seemed to be narrating my life for me. Yes. So why don't I put something out that is my side of the story? It's not hateful or anything. It's simply a beautiful moment to, to let go of. And I'm really, really proud of it. I was able to tell my story about who I was from my own mouth instead of people from the outside being able to tell my story for me. Somebody asked me a while ago, what's the one thing you wish people knew about you? And I said, I wanted it to be in my heart. What do you wish more people knew about you? My heart. You <laughs> make me cry. When this came out, I really felt like I always battled with the idea that people didn't really know me. They didn't know who I was. They didn't know Haley for Haley. And I just always had this constant battle where I was saying, I wish people just knew my heart and I was the first CD and the first concert I ever purchased. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. It was Wait, she was the first concert you went to? In the first CD I ever had. She was the first record I ever bought and she was the first concert I ever went to. Baby one more time. Britney documentary yet. And, and I love Britney Spears. She was the first concert I ever went to. Like I idolized her as a kid. And that was one of the moments where I was like, I don't have to be that 19 year old body shape anymore because I'm not. Like I'm also growing up like I that's the other thing too that I I think I'm learning is I'm not 19 anymore I'm 24 now I feel like my body has changed the most even this last you know what it's kind of giving for me as well though Hailey Bieber knows like she's never gonna get away from the fact that Justin Bieber was with Selena Gomez it's just coming off very creepy how Hailey is like copying Selena on like so many things this is all the proof that Hailey Bieber has been stalking Selena Gomez her entire life but we need to talk about this Okay, so if you didn't know, young Hailey Bieber was actually a fan of Selena Gomez. And she was a stan of Justin and Selena's relationship. To the point where she would tweet about it all the time. Things like, I don't care what anyone says, but Justin and Selena together is the definition of a teenage dream. She even would DM other stan accounts and find out where Selena and Justin were staying and literally just show up. And somehow she was able to go from being an obsessed fangirl to literally replacing Selena. And she's been copying Selena Gomez ever since and it's actually insane. Selena posts a black and white music video with her friends to call me maybe and Haley does the exact same thing Selena is seen wearing something and Haley of course has to wear it too there's some more Selena starts a cooking show where she cooks in her own kitchen and Haley starts her own show with the same premise oh and Haley of course had to edit in a chef can too Selena's beauty brand did a texting ad campaign and weeks later Haley's brand does the same thing Selena created the Rare Impact Fund where 1% of proceeds were donated. And then Haley creates the Rhodes Future Foundation where 1% of her sales are also donated. Selena got a Curse of G tattoo behind her ear for her sister, Grace. And then Haley also gets a Curse of G behind her ear, but we don't know why. These are Selena's best friends, Raquel, Ashley, and Courtney. And Haley follows all of their accounts and then proceeds to hang out with them. 
And keep in mind, these are normal people, not celebrities. For Haley's wedding with Justin, she had to hire the same makeup and nail artist that Selena always uses. And this last one, I think is the most insane one. When Justin and Selena were dating, Justin got her a J-shaped ring that was on her ring finger. And on that same hand, same finger, Haley gets a J tattoo and a bling that makes it look like a ring. And I'm sorry, y'all, but I don't think that these are all coincidences. It's kind of giving that she knows that she's never going to be able to live up in the media's eyes and in the public's eyes to what Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber had. And so maybe in her head, she's like, let me try to be more like her and then maybe Justin will like it's me more because weird. there's so many clips though of like him closing the door in her face him not waiting for her when they're in like a group of people just out in public he embarrasses there's so her. many times that it really does look like and I'm not speaking on anybody's relationship and anybody's <laughs> marriage and nothing, nothing like that I'd but they don't look happy. But I saw someone over on TikTok and they pointed out, they're like, why has Justin never defended Haley ever in any of this? This, is not, she's this is not the first time that Haley Bieber has been called out in regards to Selena Gomez. But they were like, he could just even go on his Instagram story. It doesn't have to be like with his face right there. He could just do a black screen and just type something out. He could give us a notepad, like an influencer. He's not trying to lose followers because anybody that- She's has, losing followers. Oh, well, yeah, she's lost like a million. Yeah. You know, I saw a TikTok where people are pointing out that Kylie is now allegedly mm. buying followers because you know them Kardashians can't take it when the numbers on social yeah. media start dropping. Well, Kylie Jenner, you know, she was like the number one follower. She had like 380 million followers, and then here comes Selena. It's funny that all this drama popped off right as Selena Gomez surpassed her. Kylie's followers are going down, Haley's followers are going down, but Selena's up like, I, last I heard, like 10 million. Mm hmm. Crazy. It's so funny to me that Kylie Jenner even wants to participate in this type of mean mm. girl behavior because she's supposed to be well, the girl, nice what else one. are they doing? She's supposed to be the kind one. What else are they doing? Like, yes, they have those businesses, they're but let's be mean. honest, they have a lot of people that run those businesses with them. So, I mean, they have all that money they're, they're sitting being in their mean mansions, girl. bitches. That's what they are. Yes. But I really wonder, like, what this drama, like, really, like, stems from. Is this just because of Justin Bieber, or does this go back, like, years when they were all friends hanging out did someone say something to someone because honestly they take a lot of jabs at selena gomez yeah no they do and you know i've seen there's a new trend on tiktok of people talking about how they were friends with someone but that mm -hmm. person like secretly hated them and that's almost what this seems like yeah like she was taking notes on selena because she wants to emulate her i think that she's probably a narcissist girl but you know what maybe it's because everyone honestly loves selena gomez selena gomez is never in any drama that she started People are always trying to drag her into shit, Hailey Bieber, Kylie Jenner. But you never hear anything negative about Selena Gomez. And whenever you hear of like a fan interaction with her, she's always That's going always like good. above and beyond. So I don't know, you guys will have to let us know your thoughts and opinions on that down below. Do you think this is like single white female when yes. it comes to Hailey Bieber and Selena Gomez? It's like, does Selena Gomez need to bump up the security? Moving on from that, James Charles is getting talked about once again because he's hosting a contest over on TikTok. Because finally, James Charles is going to release. He feels like there are no scandals around him right now. So <laughs> now is the time he's like, <laughs> rush it. I have not been doing anything. I've been on my best behavior. No one's going to come forward. So he uploaded a TikTok and he was telling people to like stitch his video with like their best makeup look. But he also wants to know they have to tell him like what their favorite moment and like makeup is. I want to fly 10 of you out to LA to be in the first campaign for my new makeup brand. Hi everyone. James Charles here with a very, very special announcement. After three years of long, hard work, my makeup line is finally ready to launch. While developing this brand, I've been keeping you guys in mind every single step of the way. It's been so much fun to get your guys' feedback on new products and samples, on my makeup account, on polls and on stories. I love your guys' opinions and I really want to make sure this brand is for artists of all different skill levels. So when it came time to figure out who was actually going to be in the campaign, it was a no-brainer. I'm trying to find 10 different people from TikTok who love makeup, who love being creative and the confidence that it brings you. So here's the deal. I want you to stitch this video wearing your best makeup look. And when I say best, I don't mean the best makeup look. I mean your best. It doesn't matter if it's perfect. It doesn't matter if you've been doing makeup for 10 minutes or 10 years. Just put on a makeup look that makes you feel happy and that you feel is your best. While you're wearing the makeup look, tell me your name, where you're from and your favorite makeup memory. Maybe it's the first time you stole your mom's mascara. Maybe it's the first time you ever tried a creative look on yourself. Maybe it's the makeup that you wore to prom or your wedding and you got more compliments than ever before. Make sure you tag me when you post your videos because my team and I will be looking every single day and we're going to start reaching out within the next couple of weeks to come to LA and be a part of the campaign. And don't worry because even if you're not chosen for the campaign, we're going to be adding a ton of you guys, and I do mean a ton, to our PR list.
Good luck, and I cannot wait to see your submission. So I thought that I should stitch it, and I should <laughs> let him know what my favorite. I would, of course, never get chosen to be in the campaign, like no. all these like amazing makeup skills that I have. But I thought about stitching it and letting him know like what my favorite makeup moment was, and it honestly had to have been John Geddon. So how do you feel about this formula that James Charles is working on for his makeup launch? He started a brand new TikTok page, J Charles Makeup, where he's never in any drama, and people aren't even in his comment section leaving the drama because I think that this one has maybe like half a million people following. It, but he has really brought his audience into the process of making his brand. He did the blush thing. He was like, okay, I'm gonna show you guys, but not show you guys. Here they are on. Let me know what your guys' thoughts and opinion is. So a lot of people are very much so into this, and they're saying that he took a page out of Shane and Jeffrey's book because with that documentary that they did, they showed literally everything that happened. Mm -hmm. Do you remember back when he did Instant Influencer? Mm -hmm. It's giving me that he wants to replicate that some kind of way. I feel like James Charles has this way of making everything about him but mm. he's saying it's about his audience because he wants to get to know them when in reality it's just like him sucking his own ass for people to compete to be in his like makeup video well i did see some people commenting about that like this is just a way for james to get people to slide in his dms once again mm -hmm. but i did see somewhere that one of the rules is you have to be above 18. Oh. So he's covering, he's covering his bases, he's dotting his eyes. I'm Good not being for him shady. On that one. I'm not being shady. James Charles took, is going the extra mile. It only took how mm. many cancellations? I mean, yeah. you guys, he did just get over another drama because there was another straight guy a couple months ago that came out and he pretty much tucked tail and ran away. Well, you know that James has said in the past that he does kind of like enjoy drama like around a launch because, mm -hmm. you know, it obviously boosts sales. At least that's how it used to be back in like 2018, 2019. So I wonder if James is going to have any drama around the launch. Of this because in true James Charles fashion, what would a launch be without it? I think the real tea will actually be is if James Charles actually owns his brand or if it's going to be a situation like Jaclyn Hill had with Morphe. Ooh. Did he have investors? Not that it really matters because obviously everybody that starts a major business needs investors. Will he be honest about it or will it be something that we find out later? Because I don't think that James Charles is exempt from being shady because he has a past. Well, if he does have investors, we know it's definitely not Forma. And speaking of Forma, something that I saw on social media as well, I don't know if this has any validation. I don't know if this is true in any sort of way, but people were trying to say that Jeffree Star might like have his hand in like buying out like Forma and like getting Morphe and all of that. What? It's like the could, whisperings that are being Could you imagine sad. because they threw Jeffree Star under mm -hmm. the bus and just terminated everything they had with mm -hmm. them. Could you imagine if Jeffree Star swooped in and bought it? I think it As would be just a, like a last I feel you. like it would be a terrible business move. I think it would be a waste of money because that's a dying brand and I don't think it'll be around in five years any of them, but could well, you now imagine? we have P. Luis. But could you imagine if mm. he did do that? That would be crazy. Getting back to James Charles, though, in this campaign that he's trying to cast from TikTok, maybe he's doing that because it's going to be cheaper to fly people out than actually, like, <laughs> pay models to be in this thing. But what I can say is, like, thank God that it's not just going to be James Charles. <laughs> like, I could not stand when, like, a makeup brand, it's just the owner there, the owner's face on the packaging. It's like, oh my God, like, how full of yourself. Can there you is be? one thing that I will give James. Mm. It was very catchy when he came out with that Morphe palette that that song at the beginning of it how yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. no that wasn't it oh moving on from that i need to get back to michaela real quick because she is getting talked about right now because of her instagram story now you know that glamzilla asked the question the fatal question <laughs> for <laughs> many influencers out there can you trust beauty influencers on tiktok anymore well now apparently you can't trust them over on instagram because michaela a lot of people are saying did an undisclosed sponsorship or <laughs> ad promotion whatever you want to call it out there for Scrub Daddy. What's that sound? Whoa, 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 whoa. What do we have here? Scrub Daddies? Where'd you get this? Seriously, I know you really want it, but you can't have it, my friend. You cannot. I saw that Scrub Daddy came out with this, and I needed it. It's so cool. You put your dish soap in here, and you can just squeeze it and scrub. I love it. Teresa, and you, you know she's guilty. We just talked about this. You can't have this. Give it to me. This, I know it looks like a toy. <laughs> Don't allow it. Don't. So, dish soap. I screwed it off, and I'm going to fill it up. Ooh, pretty. I'm doing this with one hand. Of all things, a scrub daddy. But apparently there's like a huge scrub daddy community. Yeah. And now they have actually, I learned this on TikTok earlier, they have branched out. It's not just the one scrub daddy. Yeah, you can no, get a dog, you can a get a cat. Stuff. I think you can get a f 
fish. It's crazy to see how much the Scrub Daddy universe has expanded. Scrub Mommy, Scrub Cat, Scrub Dog. They've got colors. I'm getting blue. They have a gray one back there if you're goth. Flower. Like, I did not know this. Yeah. I don't think I've ever actually used a Scrub Daddy. I love Daddy. Scrub Daddy. Are they good? Yeah. We, I used wow. Scrub Daddy a lot when we were at your mom's house. Oh. Well, according to Michaela, this new item that they have is just like the end all be all. And it's like amazing she has just never been so happy than to have this one item and she showed you exactly how to use it how to put the dawn dish soap in it well that just brings up what manny was talking about on his yes. TikTok. manny really did spill some tea when it comes he to did. like the promotion part of tiktok he threw them all under is that this bus. a situation where michaela possibly posted this on instagram so somebody with the mm -hmm. brand will see it and then ask her or pay her to promote it using That's what her I was face thinking. that is exactly what i was thinking as i was watching that because it was like her dog somehow got the scrub daddy she did a point to show exactly what it looked like on the back and then two clips later it was the dog playing with the scrub daddy again i totally think that it could have been something like well that. do you remember just a few weeks ago at the super bowl was mm -hmm. it the truly drink that she was holding yeah. or celsius it was some, some kind of drink it, it was some drink she was holding and people were wondering if it was possibly sponsored she said that it wasn't but the product placement was perfect it was right Ma in the middle michaela knows what to do to get people talking so this might just be a tactic of her doing that to have people say that about her so she can victimize herself all over again the drink thing could have gone one of two ways for me it could have been that yes she was hoping this brand would pay her or it was sponsored they said here's some money hold this drink out for us but it also could have been that they were invited to this super bowl thing on behalf of fenty that was who was sponsoring whatever party they were at those were the drinks and they get asked can you pose with us so it could have gone either way for me. every move that michaela makes now going forward especially after what manny and me yeah, said a question and all. a lot of influencers for that matter i've seen a lot of influencers getting called out for this they're gonna have to kind of navigate Gate differently now yeah, because everyone is on alert and everyone is sick of their shit honestly lying to them just for some money i don't know maybe michaela's like i'm getting called out over here on tiktok i need to go do some scrub daddy <laughs> shit on instagram if michaela can't do anything she can get people to talk mm. she is very good at getting people to talk about her and she knows exactly what strings to pull and what to say what do you think will happen if tiktok is banned and michaela has to replatform herself where do you think she'll go what i think, think she's do? gonna go to instagram yeah. like that's her second highest followers she has a few million over there yeah, like but Logan. also, I think that she'll just somehow make a deal with that person that's uploading her TikToks. To, <laughs> you know, the person with over 280,000 subscribers that's uploading her TikToks over here, getting hundreds of thousands of views, if not millions of mm -hmm. views. I think she'll just hit them up and be like, can I have the login back? Thanks. Do you think that that's really not Michaela? I'm not saying that it is Michaela. I honestly do believe that it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> the fact that they have over 280,000 subscribers, they're getting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views. It's a about. little weird like are they monetized because now shorts you can monetize them that is that is not weird? weird Michaela who's all about her bag allegedly charging like two hundred fifty thousand dollars per post that'll put some fake eyelashes on so she can make some more money she's gonna allow someone to make that much off of her name they're not transforming the content in any way and like making it no like they're, they're not giving commentary uploads. on her or anything it's direct uploads and honestly there's a lot of people in the comment section over there that actually believe that it is her because they see nothing else on the channel so they're commenting back to this person as if they're talking to Michaela I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if the account is commenting to people but that's I think weird. that's, that's what I think will happen I think that that's she'll weird. just she'll somehow magically get into that out of the kindness of their heart they gave it to her I think that we're gonna see her start promoting another social media platform she's gonna be telling people to go follow her on Instagram maybe she'll go to rumble like that and with all that said everyone that is it for this video if you have made it this far leave us a sponge emoji down below if you think that Michaela needs to hook her good friend Alex Earl up because well, Scrub Daddy needs a sponsor <laughs> she does they need, Scrub Daddy they need a sponsor over there so Michaela hook up your friend and with all that said we'll see you guys all in our next video bye